Well, I've in fact now positioned uh, that label, and it turned out that the appropriate translate and scale values were uh, as so. But let me now move on to demonstrate how to add two sets of texture coordinates to a model. So I'm going to go back into the scene view and into my bottle. And I'm going to, I've got a details view here, and I just want to remind uh, you what we've got here attached to our vertices. Uh, and what we've got are, is a, a three-valued attribute uh, called UV. UV, and it has three components, U, component 0, component 1, component 2. By the way, component 2 is more or less ignored uh, here. Uh, components 0 and 1 are the U and V coordinates. Now, to add some additional UVs, a, a second layer of UVs, onto the same model, we're going to need to use a layer node. And by default, uh, this sets us to uh, layer 1, and that's the layer that we're currently on here. So there's been no change here. If I was to lay down a UV project and project uh, onto our vertices, uh, we would get the same thing, UV coordinates called UV. However, if I set the current layer here to 2, then all of the UV operations that take place after this node in our network are going to affect or create a further set of UV coordinates. So in this case, it's created a set of UV coordinates called UV2, again with three components. And indeed, I could lay down a further layer node. And I could set it to layer 3. And I can lay down another UV project. And it would give me a set of coordinates called UV3. So the layer node allows you to adjust different sets of UV coordinates. So let me delete uh, everything that comes after this layer node here. So I'm on layer 2. Let me have a look at our scene view. And once again, I'm going to split it. And I'm going to set this view to the UV viewport. And we can see that, at the moment, it's empty. Uh, and that's because uh, we don't have, we haven't yet created any UV coordinates on this second layer. And so we're not seeing anything here. Uh, so we've got a, a, a blank canvas for our UVs. Now, in some circumstances, this may be what you want. You may, need, you may want to start again afresh and add an entire separate set of UV coordinates. But in this case, what I like to do, in fact, is start with a copy of the UV coordinates that I'd earlier created, and then adjust them on the second layer. And to do that, I'm going to need to use an attribute create uh, node here before the layer node. And what I'm going to do is create an attribute called UV2. And it's going to have size 3. And it's going to be a vertex attribute. And then I'm going to set it to dollar map u dollar map v and dollar map w. And what this should have done, let's have a look at our details view, is created uh, an attribute called uv2 uh, with exactly the same values as uv. So now when I go on to my uh, new layer, and let me uh, call this copy UVs. Now when I go on to my new layer, I should see that I've got a copy of the existing UVs. And what I am going to do now is I'm going to set the background image 
not to the bottle texture, but to the label. And let's apply that just to this current view. And we can see our label. And then I'm going to use a UV transform. And I'm going to use it to position our UVs. So that we position the label at the center of this block here, which represents uh, the outside of our bottle. So I'm going to put our label here, maybe expand it a bit, and I can position it like so. And you'll notice that most of our UVs are now outside the 0 to 1 range. But that doesn't matter because that's exactly what we're doing here. We're positioning our texture by limiting uh, the number of UVs that are within uh, the 0 to 1 range. So this should mean... Well, the next thing I'm going to need to do is to adapt my shader so that it can take advantage of this second set of UV coordinates. So let me go into the shop context. Now, unfortunately, the version of Houdini I'm using is crashing when I attempt to edit this constant shader. So let's get rid of the constant shader and lay down a basic shader. And I'm going to dive inside. And in this case, we have a slightly more complicated setup. The texture map that provides the base texture is embedded in this digital asset, this surface color digital asset. So in fact, it's the output of this that I'm going to need to use in my composite. So let me move all of this back. And I'm going to need to lay down a texture again, create a parameter for the map. And I'm going to need to have a shading layer parameter node to feed in this second set of UVs. Now you notice that the UV chords node here is what's providing the UVs into this surface color, which is the, the standard way of calculating uh, the texture. The shading layer node allows you, instead of using that uh, the base layer, the bottom layer of UV coordinates, the shading layer node allows you to feed in shading coordinates from a different layer. And we can see that there's an attribute layer parameter here which allows me to choose the layer, and I'm going to set it to the second layer. But we can see here that, in fact, there are several different uh, types of attribute that you can layer on your model, including color and alpha information, but we're going to stick with UV coordinates. And notice that there isn't a, an input for this. There isn't a, a connector which allows you to change this attribute layer. You can't, uh, therefore, make it into a parameter that's visible at the top level of your shader interface. You have to set it here within the network. So I need a vector to float converter, and then I need to connect this to the S and the T. And once again, I need this to produce RGBA values, and then I need the border color to have an alpha of zero, and for the wrap to be set to decal. And then I'm going to lay down a composite node, and I'm going to take uh, the results of this and convert it to a vector plus a float, feed the float into the alpha connector, and the vector into the color. And the operation we want is A over B. And I'm going to have a look and see where the color output of this, of this node here goes. The color output goes into three different places. It goes here into the ambient connector. It goes here into the diffuse of the Lambert. And it goes into the paint export. So let's connect it to all of those three things. Oh, 
like so. And obviously the color of this surface color node needs to come into the B connector. Its alpha needs to come into the B alpha connector. And the alpha of our composite needs to go down into this multiply node here. Like so. So what this should have done is to create a texture map that is going to draw on that second set of shading coordinates. So again, let's have a look at my output and let me see where that texture map is going to be. It's going to be right at the bottom here. Let me create a tab to go around that, which we're going to call decal. So let's get rid of that parameter editor, move up and promote material parameters. And what we should find now is that hidden here somewhere is a decal which will allow us to choose our label. And let's now make sure that this is applied to our bottle. And of course we need our color map to be set to the underlying texture. And I'm just going to check that that has been correctly applied. It hasn't. So I need to apply the basic surface. And let's take a render and see whether that's worked. And there we can see that our label is being applied to the bottle. So that's a quick tutorial on how to set up UVs in Houdini and how to use multiple layers of UV coordinates. I hope it's been useful.